It's certainly the case that most video game genres have seen things swing towards the more accessible over the years. As well as gaming becoming more accepted and commercial, widening the net to more players, the invention of things like save functions and the emergence of cheats and walkthroughs online has certainly helped players crack games that would have left them stumped back in the day. But that isn't to say all titles have followed this trajectory. There are plenty of examples out in the industry of games being released that are so unforgiving and purposefully difficult that only a select few dedicated fans have been able to conquer them. With that in mind, I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 unforgiving video games hardly anyone can beat. Number 10. Cuphead 2017 when Cuphead was first teased and then released in 2017, most people thought the game was going to be little more than a cushy homage to the classic American rubber hose style of the animations. Instead, what players got when they picked up the Studio MDHR title was one of the most infuriating and toughest games ever made. With players taking control of Cuphead and his brother Mugman in a quest to repossess spirits and pay back a debt owed to the devil, the game is mainly made up of boss battles that require intense concentration and quick reactions. The clunky eight-direction firing radius and distracting, albeit undeniably superb visual styles and theme tunes are also something players need to deal with. The emphasis on muscle memory and exhausting the retry button certainly helps Cuphead feel like a retro title, but has led to some extremely small completion numbers from players. Just 12.5% of all players have completed the game on normal difficulty on PC. However, that number drops to just 1.2% when it comes to players that have been able to conquer the expert mode. On consoles, that number drops even further, with just 7% of Xbox users completing the game. Number 9. Wolfenstein 2 the New Colossus, 2017. Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus was released in 2017 to plenty of positive reviews and a healthy play account. Following the story of William B.J. Blazkowicz on his crusade against the Nazi regime across the United States, everything from the narrative to the gameplay mechanics was singled out for praise from players and critics alike. With that being said, The New Colossus still suffers from a lopsided difficulty that's made completing the game quite a tricky task for some players. With William being more vulnerable to enemies than what most players are probably used to in other games, deaths can stack up across a playthrough. But in order to fully complete the game, players have found a way of finishing the campaign without dying once. The combination of a fragile protagonist with so many gunslinging shootouts does not make for an easy challenge. In total, the Mindleben achievement has only been completed by 0.99% of PlayStation users, with just 0.94% of players managing to complete every single trophy the new Colossus has to offer. Number 8. I Wanna Be The Guy 2007 The platform puzzle genre has certainly made a name for itself as one of the most painstaking sections of the gaming world, with so many titles being released with seemingly the sole intention of infuriating players as much as possible. While a significant portion of the blame can be attributed to Michael K. and O'Reilly's I Wanna Be The Guy. Developed on Microsoft Windows using a multimedia Fusion 2 engine, I Wanna Be The Guy was a pioneer in creating the addictive, unfair-feeling platforming genre. And it's gone on since to develop quite the cult following online. Players take control of The Kid, who takes on some of the most recognizable faces and features from various retro games as he looks to become the man. The game demands players rehearse different tactics and strategies, making them go through dozens of frustrating death cycles. Even after players are able to work out a strategy, completing it successfully is no small feat. Falling blocks, fatally sharp objects, and pixel point obstacles that need to be cleared are all purposefully put in such a way to make this one of the most brutal feeling titles that anybody could ever hope to play. Number 7. Ninja Gaiden 1988 while certainly iconic in their own right, the Ninja Gaiden series has definitely garnered a reputation for being amongst the toughest games to crack over the years. The original title to kickstart them all was released by Tecmo back in 1988, and sees players take control of Ryu Hayabusa, a dragon-human ninja hybrid who must overcome six acts of 20 different levels. Unlike most traditional side-scrolling combat retro games, Ninja Gaiden's unforgiving difficulties begin with the mechanic of Ryu's physical strength deep decreasing every time he's hit, either by an enemy or an obstacle. Players can die if their life bar is completely emptied, they fall off the screen, or the timer on each level hits zero. All of this doesn't even touch the surface on how the overly detailed backgrounds and designs make things even more jarring for a player. 
According to reports from lead designer Masato Kato, the logic was that players wouldn't stick around playing a game that was too easy. So Tecmo made the conscious decision to have the game stick out as one of the harder titles on the market. The end result is a game that plenty love, albeit few have managed to actually finish. Number 6. Ghosts and Goblins 1985 a true retro classic that dominated the gaming world in its heyday, players who've managed to have a go at Capcom's Ghosts and Goblins will testify to it being one of the most brutal titles to have come out of the 80s. In the game, players take control of a brave knight named Arthur as he combats all manner of fantastical beings in a quest to save Princess Prinprin. And while the game itself can be completed in under an hour, there are so many kinks in play that make Ghosts and Goblins incredibly unforgiving for a player. Not only does the game Game required two run-throughs to fully complete, but players can only be hit twice before dying, are forced to restart a level if they don't make it to the halfway mark first time around, and need to reach the finish all within a set time limit. Throw on top some unpredictable movement patterns and enemies that are constantly respawning, and it quickly becomes apparent that muscle memory can't be relied upon to overcome this Capcom classic. Number 5. Rock Band 2 2008. On the face of things, there's not a whole lot in play when it comes to Rock Band 2 being a video game that anyone is likely to have difficulty completing. But whilst the game certainly has some songs that prove a worthy adversary to fully perfect, anyone hoping to fully complete the game will soon encounter a challenge that pushes things to absolute physical limits. Literally. In order to get every achievement in the game, players will have to pick up the infamous Bladder of Steel trophy. In what is honestly one of the few video game achievements that prioritize a player's physical performance on the other side of the screen, the Bladder of Steel achievement requires players to complete the endless set list 2 without pausing or failing once. The set list can take a whopping 6 hours to complete, with the game only giving players a handful of opportunities to pause for a break. In total, there are 84 songs to complete when it comes to the endless set list on Rock Band 2, with less than 4% of players ever managing to complete this grueling challenge. Number 4. Super Meat Boy 2010 2010 Super Meat Boy made a real splash when it first became available to play, dominating the indie scene and quickly establishing itself as one of the world's most frustratingly difficult titles to complete. Players take control of Meat Boy, a small red cube, on his quest to save his girlfriend Bandage Girl from the evil scientist Dr. Fetus. The game consists of over 300 levels and was inspired by the replayability of titles like Super Mario Bros. and Ghosts and Goblins, meaning the developers went out of their way to make sure players were dying as frequently as possible. The ability to slide up all four walls and paint the level with the meat juice that explodes across the screen when players die gives Super Meat Boy a unique dimension when it comes to level design, requiring precise timings, jumps, and a painstaking amount of trial and error for every stage. In total, Super Meat Boy has over 100,000 registered players on Xbox Live alone, with just over 1,000, that's roughly 1% of those, completing the final level 720X since since its release. Number 3. Alien Isolation 2014 Lauded as one of the best sci-fi horror games ever made, Alien Isolation is a survival horror game that excels in dropping players in the middle of the claustrophobic feel of the 1979 classic flick. With an emphasis on the tense paranoia feeling of the first film in the series, as opposed to the more action-packed sequels, Alien Isolation is one of the most terrifying experiences gamers can put themselves through. It's also one of the most challenging in terms of gameplay. In isolation, players must skulk around their space station while stealthily avoiding the xenomorph alien that's broken in. The xenomorph cannot be harmed with regular weapons and is capable of delivering a one-hit kill if it finds players. Completing the game will bag players the Ripley signing off achievement, but according to PS Mania, only a grand total of 15.4% of PS4 users have actually managed to make it that far in the game. What's more, the one-shot trophy required for the Platinum Award and 100% completion requires players to complete the entire game without a single death. It requires a huge amount of map knowledge and mechanic know-how and has only been completed by just 2% of players. Number 2. Cloudberry Kingdom 2013 The bright and happy visuals shouldn't distract players from the fact that Cloudberry Kingdom remains one of the most unforgiving titles to have ever been released over the past decade or so. Another platformer designed to infuriate its players, Cloudberry Kingdom's level design puts an emphasis on precise horizontal movements and an adaptive difficulty that's designed to adjust to a player's skill level. 
The game's levels start off simple enough, but quickly descend into the utterly insane as more and more obstacles are thrown into the mix. Just like with other platformers like I Wanna Be The Guy, what makes Cloudberry Kingdom so notoriously difficult is the abundance of underhand tactics the developers utilize to trip players up. Crammed with invisible threats across all 320 levels, the fact the final chapter in the game is named The Masochist should speak volumes. In fact, the developers even pledged to give the first player to complete the game $1,000. That's how much of a challenge this game has proven to be. In total, less than 0.10% of all all players across all consoles have managed to complete the Shenanigans Trophy, the achievement reserved for those who make it through the final chapter of the game. Number 1. Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy, 2017 Innovation Nuovo Award at the Independent Games Festival, Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy is a game that's designed to push players' patience to the absolute limit. The game sees players take control of a hiker who lives permanently in a cauldron and whose sole mission in life is to haul himself up various obstacles using just his trusty rock climbing hammer. Players control the protagonist with just their mouse or trackpad if they're a complete psycho, with one small slip being enough to undo so much painstaking progress. Developer Bennett Foddy was apparently inspired by purposefully difficult titles growing up, believing that features like mid-level saving was denying a certain type of gamer an experience they craved. With that being said, out of the 2.7 million players that have taken on getting over it, just 1% of those have managed to actually beat the game showcasing just how much of an achievement a flawless run in the game truly is. Foddy's philosophical insights and rambles throughout the game will either soothe or infuriate players, but there's no denying getting over it remains one of the most brutal titles in the Steam library. That's the end of our list, but do let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any more unforgiving video games that you reckon hardly anyone can beat. And let me know if you beat them. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you're liking, come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great gaming lists.